Hello spicy sophomores, I am Cedric and welcome to Crash Course number one. For the next few minutes, we will discuss the flourishing of the visual performing arts, literacy, and scientific exploration. Alright, you probably heard of the name King Alfonso of Spain in the 12th century. Mr. Cedric, Mr. Cedric, how is he important for this topic? Did he do something great for us? Oh, me from the past. King Alfonso was the first person who built the first university in Spain, the University of Salamanca. With this help, people are able to discover more technological advances. Due to the educational developments, the studies of physics and mathematics were invented in Greece during the archaic period. They also helped the trading become more convenient because the Islamic pharmacies were invented and Muslims used these medical advancements to help prevent sickness uh, for traders when they travel. Well, it's time for me to go back to the past to watch the authentic Renaissance art in the 13th century, which originated from Italy and spread throughout Europe. Thank you for my crew, Wenzel and Hui, for making this video, and I will see you next time, spicy sophomores. Scientific exploration had great minds such as Isaac Newton and Galileo. Each contributed to scientific exploration in their own way such as how Isaac Newton understood the concept of gravity and created the laws of motion which allowed for him to synthesize the science behind astronomy and mechanics. As for Galileo, he studied in astronomy and would create observations such as the four moons that orbit Jupiter and the distant stars, and soon demonstrated that the planets would orbit in an elliptical pattern which managed to shut down the theory of circular orbiting planets. And as of visual arts, this was a time during the Renaissance era, which influenced a new type of art into Europe and also the concept of miniature paintings in the Middle East and South Asia. So the iconic paintings of the Renaissance first started in Italy, then eventually spread into Western Europe, and the invention of the printing press and cultural diffusion allowed for the expansion of literacy. between hemisphere had on religion? Sure, it all started when Christopher Columbus came to the New World and they would force Christian Christianity on the natives. Really? How would they do that? Well, they would try to co convert to Christianity by threatening the poor natives by chopping their hands off. <laughs> that sounds a bit rough. Well, I know they also made natives like forget their own beliefs. Well, that's all the info we have until next time. different hemispheres, the Eastern and the Western Hemisphere. They each live their own dimensional lifestyles. So one might think, how did it help create the Columbian Exchange? Well, the East brought smallpox and measles which killed off the Native Americans. Yikes. And the Spanish brought plants and animals to America, which helped bring my favorite penguins! A moment of extraordinary beauty. Oh. Ah. Hello! Well, with the movements of diseases, plants, and animals, they helped create the Columbian Exchange. Describe the relationship between the Eastern and Western Hemisphere and how their ties led to the Columbian Exchange. So what was the Columbian Exchange? It was the diffusion of crops, animals, disease, technology, ideas, and humans. It took place in the 15th to 16th century between the Old and New Worlds. So what was the New and Old World? The New World was the Western Hemisphere, which consisted of the Americas and the Caribbean. The Old World was used to describe the Eastern Hemisphere, which included Africa and Eurasia. The Columbian Exchange was named after the Italian explorer Christopher Columbus, who in 1942 set sail hoping to travel to Asian markets, but instead found unknown territory in the Eastern Hemisphere. 
Global circulation of goods was promoted by royal chartered European monopoly companies that took silver from the Spanish colonies in the Americas to purchase Asian goods for the Atlantic markets. Commercialization and the creation of the global economy were connected to the new circulation of silver from the Americas. This relationship of trade between the two worlds eventually led to the Colombian Exchange. You know what I think is cool? Christopher Columbus. Why? Well, you want to get to India for that juicy spice trade. But how is he going to pay to get there? Simple. He didn't have to. He got Spain too. Unfortunately, he never made it there. He went to the Bahamas. But that's why. I think hey guys, so for example, uh, rulers like Kang Zhe and Yong Zhang would fin finance the voyages by just selling stuff to other people so they make more money and which would allow them to trade more. Oh, man, it's you there. Well, uh, welcome back. So you heard about my man, my man Christopher Columbus, right? He was funded by these, uh, by the kings and rulers at the time, you know, gave him some money so they can get over there, you know what I mean? Get that spice right, you know what I mean? You gotta get that spice. Well, uh, the merchants, you know what I mean? They, uh, they also got funded by the uh, rulers, the kings, but, uh, the rulers and the kings had to heavily tax us, man, like, was hard but it did work out in the long run by boosting the economy it was uh it was also good that <coughs> using the uh, the uh the technique called mercantilism they were able to they were able to maximize the reward but minima minimize the risk During the mid-16th century in the Spanish colonies of the Americas, a large mass of silver was mined and refined from a mountain of silver in the Inca Empire. This was done by the modifications made by the Spaniards to the Micha system when they first arrived to the Inca Empire. Silver was then traded across the seas to Spain, leading to an uprise in wealth, funding the Spanish Armada. Another major global economic country that was running low on bronze was China. Due to the subnormal amount of bronze coins in China, which was their currency, began to trade significant amounts of silver from Spain. To do this, however, many taxpayers in China resorted to the production of silk to pay their taxes. This led to both countries becoming significantly wealthy, which was cut short for Spain after they mishandled their economy. Many resources were difficult to find or produce in Europe, so Europeans had to purchase goods from other countries, which led to an outflow of, of cash and an unstable European economy. Hey guys, here, you're about to buy... Where's all the stuff? Let's go to China. Ugh. Whoa, look at all these goods. We buy this panda. Look at all these spices. Oh yeah, take all my money. I'm out of here. Of the bad economy, Europeans tried to colonize other parts of the world to be able to produce their own goods and compete with other countries in trade. Ugh, this is my land. Look at this stuff I made on my land. I wish I could trade it to somebody. Oh, I'm gonna trade you the lobster for your hat and the snake for your pants. I'll take it. Take this oh. stuff, man. Thank you. Thank you. European merchants' role on Asian trade was transporting goods from one Asian country to another. Oh, sir, can I buy your oranges? Yes. There's your money. Oh. 
That's the exotic oranges. Take your money. Oh. Why Transoceanic Explorations? Motivated by religion, profit, and power, the influences of European countries to expand greatly increased at this time and feel the evolution and advancement of overseas explorations. Certain European states, primarily the Portugal and the Netherlands, were primarily interested in building empires based on global trade and commerce. Other European powers, Spain and England, particularly, decided to conquer and colonize the new territories they discovered. Spanish Explorations. 1492, Columbus had sailed across the Atlantic Ocean, reaching land at San Salvador in the Bahamas. Early 16th century, Spanish conquistadores pressed beyond the Caribbean islands, moving west into Mexico and south into Panama and Peru. Bernard Magellan organized the Spanish expedition to the East Indies from 1519 to 1522. Portugal Explorations The Portuguese were one of the main players in the Age of Discovery, and while under the control of Prince Henry the Navigator, they searched for a route to Asia by sailing south around Africa. This trip to Africa caused them to learn more about navigation and geography. A while later, people such as Vasco da Gama and Christopher Columbus set sail to various places in the world and exploited many of those places. Soon after Columbus's voyage to the Americas, the Spanish, French, Dutch, and English set sail and explored and exploited the New World. Hey Brian. Me? Yeah. Uh, why did Portugal, Spain, and Europe as a whole get involved in transoceanic exploration? I don't know why. Well, Spain was involved at first in search of a new route to Asia. Portugal then got involved in the search of fertile land. And eventually, once the word spread of the new world, all of Europe was, got involved for the riches and spread of religion. Well, this occurred during the early 15th centuries and also originated in the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, the European groups uh, were traveled west across the Atlantic uh, Ocean and they trade them for silver and agricultural products. Uh, the Man uh, Manila Gallenos demonstrated the earliest working of global trade. In addition to that, the Manila Gallen Galleons were trade ships which transported goods across the Atlantic Ocean. Portugal, Spain, and Europe were involved in the Columbia Exchange, which allowed high highly demanded European goods to travel across the sea, so such as slaves. Slaves. This actually allowed them to be part of the, part of the Columbia Exchange. <laughs> Slave Exchange allowed for increased manufactured goods and agricultural production. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are here to discuss the technological advancements throughout Europe that helped improve transoceanic trade and travel. Two in particular, the Astrolab and the Caravel, drastically improved both. Starting with the Astrolab, it improved travel because it was the, one of the only primary tools a navigator could use, and by using this, it determines their latitude to by aligning the instrument with the known star or the sun so they could figure out the time and place they were at. Caravel is a light, fast, and maneuverable ship. First device by the Portuguese to improve trans-ocean travel slash trade because of its light weight design which required a smaller crew and it was able to carry more cargo than typical or driven Mediterranean ships. In the final analysis, the Caravan and the Astrolab drastically improved trans-oceanic trade and travel by making it more efficient and more effective. AP World History Technology Unit 4 Just what are some examples of technologies? The Magnetic Compass, first invented as a device for deviation by the Chinese Han Dynasty. This compass was made of iron oxide and mineral oil. It helped explorers reach a destination. The Chinese compass put in north, east, south, and west. The Astrolab was invented sometime around 200 BC by a Greek astronomer. The history of the Astrolab begins more than 2,000 years ago. 
He was used in voyages down the African coast by Portuguese explorers. Bastro Lab helped sailors measure the angle of the sun to find latitude. Both of these technologies were used by the Europeans during the Age of Exploration. Four of the Americas led to the creation of the Atlantic slave trade. Brazil had the highest number of slaves imported with about 4 million slaves. That was approximately 40% of the total slaves brought to America. Technological advancements allowed Europeans to travel easily across the globe. This further aided the age of exploration and helped increase the Atlantic slave trade. The compass and the astrolabe facilitated further exploration and trade. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Created using Powtoon. Good Cornwall Pioneers. Today is Friday, February 2nd, 2018. I'm Ollie. And I'm Valerie. And, and this, this is the Pioneer Press WAP edition. Hey Ollie, how did trade affect trading regions? What trading regions? Well, the Mediterranean, Indian Ocean, Sahara, and Eurasia, of course. Well, in the Indian Ocean, the spread of the monsoon winds helped trade become more effective as mariners were able to navigate better through the Indian Ocean. Oh yeah, also in the Mediterranean region, they spread cultures and Christianity. Not only that, but trade also spread epidemic diseases such as the bubonic plague. While going more south, the Sahara Desert also had a, an advantage due to trade because trade helped many empires, such as the Mali Empire, to prosper and become rich through the trade of gold. Through trade, camels became more useful as they required little water and they could travel in extreme conditions. Also, the Silk Roads helped spread agriculture, animals, and diseases which took out over half the population in Eurasia. Man, that was one interesting conversation. Well, that's all, that's all we have for today, Spicy Sophomores. Make sure to tag us in all your photos at Spicy Sophomores using hashtag WAP and, and press, press on bios. From West Africa, gold? Ivory, exotic feathers, and spices were transported across the desert. Along with the exports were slaves that were tasked to carry goods and were then sold afterwards. Due to the trans-Saharan trade, civilization spread and powerful African states emerged. Ghana, Mali, Songhal, Hanimbornu, and the Hausa people aided the rise of the West African states. Also, in the Swahili trading cities such as Zanzibar, Pimba, Pate, and Mogadishu blended Swahili culture with Islam and Bantu elements. The Indian Ocean trade was used by Muslims, Indians, Malays, and Europeans. India remained the geographic and economic center of its trade. However, other countries have played significant roles expanding the trade to the China Seas. Goods that are being traded include silk, cotton, rice, porcelain, and spices, which flowed throughout India and Southeast Asia. Between the Baltic Sea and China Sea, caravan trading thrived and commercial hubs developed along the trade routes. Aleppo in Syria was the most important commercial center in the Middle East since it was located at the end of land routes from India to Baghdad. Artwork, perfume, wool, and olive oil were traded throughout the Mediterranean basin. They were transported to the Indian Ocean by ships from Western Europe and Northern Africa. Powerful nobles would join together to overthrow the king, and this led to many kings reorganizing the arrangement of elites, soon leading to many nobles losing power and belonging in enormous debt. One example of challenges new elites faced was in Russia during Ivan III and Ivan IV's reign. The elites known as boyars would have immense wealth and power until Ivan IV would exile boyars from their estates, which cut off the source of wealth and demolish local military power, which led to them falling together. <laughs> Can't touch me. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Back off. The Creole elites rose with the Spanish American Revolution being supported by all classes leading them to become leaders in the new coming world of individual societies. Manchu in China became the new political and economic elites by overthrowing the Ming in 1644 and establishing the Qing Dynasty. They forbid the Han from trying to interfere or interact with the culture in any way, no matter if it was from intermarriage and whatever mixing that was going on they didn't allow it at all it was off limits 100 percent the manchus got the upper hand 
in the situation and they were paid in silver while the other ethnic groups were lower and paid with copper. Our question is, can you explain the impact of the growing demand of raw materials and finished products on peasant agriculture, plantation growth, and labor? The impact of demand for raw material increased peasant labor. As well, peasants were shipped around the world and more and more plantations were created. What slaves owner did? The reason for sending their slaves was because they wanted more cotton and textiles. Cotton and textiles were important committees to trade for other goods. The places they were sent to. They were sent to Russia for aiding in state objectives, the Americas part of the triangular trade, and China to produce silk. The end. The Little Ice Age was a period of extreme cooling that lasted from the 14th to 19th century. The cold weather decimated agriculture practices and settlement in the Northern Hemisphere. In Iceland, the harsh weather prevented agriculture and trade growth, causing the population to decline by nearly half. Frozen rivers meant that crops could not grow due to a lack of water. Plantations simply needed more help, leading to an increase in peasant agriculture. Staple crops such as potatoes and sugar failed to withstand the harsh weather conditions. Since their production declined significantly, social unrest came into play because of starvation and poverty. Fishing failed as a food source because they migrated to warmer waters due to the cold oceans. Due to the negative effects, the Little Ice Age was perhaps too cool back then. Looks like I have to constantly drift away now. Thank you for watching! Ottoman Empire, Mughal Empire, Manchu Empire, Russian Empire. Long ago, the four empires lived somewhat in harmony. Then everything changed when trade increased and gunpowder was used for power. Gunpowder was the main source that contributed to the effect of cannons and armed weapons. It was used as a military fighting tactic which intimidated enemies. Those with gunpowder weapons were at a greater advantage because it creates more damage and casualties. For example, the Spaniards had the luxury of gunpowder weapons whereas the Inca did not, even though their numbers were tremendously larger. This led to the fall of the Inca Empire. Hi, on trade is basically a commercial industry that is responsible for manufacturing, pairing, and selling your weapons and other materials. It will help with supplying your military forces. I have rifles, cannons, gunpowder, artillery, textiles, you name it. Cannons are destructive weapons that make conquering easy. For example, Portuguese vessels use cannons to capture trading sites and be able to control the Indian Ocean trade. Gunpowder for weapons, cannons for conquering, and arms trade for supplies and wealth. These three components help imperial expansion go further. The methods rulers used to generate revenue for territory expansion were tribute collection and tax farming. Tribute collection was a system where defeated peoples or civilizations were forced to pay a tax in the forms of goods or labor. These services helped rulers generate revenue when expanding their territories because they defeated peoples equaled more manpower to contribute to the civilization, where in turn resulted economic growth from the services they provided. Examples of rulers who used the tribute system were the Aztecs and the Incan. Tax farming was the government collecting taxes from the population. This method of tax collection helped rulers generate revenue while expanding as bigger territories resulted in more people. Under your control, we will pay your taxes, contributing to the economy. Examples of the tax farming were Rome, Egypt, Greece, and Great Britain.
Hey Spicy Sophomores, what's up? I'm back here on our campus for a special AP World History edition of Piles on the Street. I'm here with Annie. Okay, so Annie, can you identify the types of military professionals and bureaucratic elites that were formed by rulers in order to preserve their authority over their domain? Well, based on my knowledge of world history, the Gupta Empire in, the, in ancient India was one of the largest military and political empires because of their decentralized government. However, although being a powerful empire, it was divided into multiple provinces in where each had its own administrative center. With officers and councils governing each area, the, empire, the emperor could keep close watch over his province. So next, I'm here with... Arnia. So, Arnia, can you identify the types of military professionals and bureaucratic elites that were formed by rulers in order to preserve their authority over their domains? Well... The Mongols were a military basis of an empire that was rapidly increasing in size, and the ruler Genghis Khan had a lot to oversee. In order to preserve his authority of his domain, Genghis Khan would send the Mongols out to strike fear into the neighboring empires by wiping out towns, whole populations to pieces, and leaving their deceased bodies and blood everywhere as a sign of power to other neighboring empires, allowing Genghis Khan to preserve his authority over time. So this concludes our Piles on the Street um, AP World Edition. Hey Spicy Sophomores, this is the Unit 4 Key Concepts Project by Alan Isaac Robesia, Paolo Lopez Magical, and Yijun John Cho. Now our question is, can you describe and identify examples of the practices that rulers adopted for dealing with the varying religious and ethnic practices of their subjects? <laughs> well, let's talk about that. Start this lesson with Matteo Ricci, 1522-1610. He was a Jesuit missionary to China, a religious leader. Arrived in China in 1582, argued that Jesus and Confucius were similar. Talked about how Christianity was more similar to Confucianism than Neo-Confucianism. Was able to memorize and speak Chinese after a few years in the imperial court. Allowed the Chinese veneration of ancestors. Now, with the new immigrations of Western Europeans in China, it was so just suitable for them to learn Chinese and teach the Chinese Christianity. Now, as Matteo Ricci taught Christianity in China, he actually compared Jesus and Confucius similarly quite oftenly as well. Representation of Ricci's Chinese followers depicted Jesus as more Asian than Middle Eastern. That's why he has more chinky. But anyways, another religious leader known as Donna Beatrice, the Arabic lady, 1684-1706, Started the Antonian movement, believed that St. Anthony called her to a greater purpose, supposedly did miracles and healings, had very different outlooks on Christianity, such as taught that Jesus was black, said that heaven is for Africans, and proclaimed that Congo was a holy land. Because of this, she was getting a lot of power in the African society, and Christians were very intimidated and burned her at the stakes. Maybe that's why you can say things were getting a little heated. <laughs> okay. That joke may be a little bit morbid, but you gotta have fun world history, right? At least to some extent. Anyways, I'll end you guys off with this meme saying that Donna Beaches could have been right about saying Jesus is black. Who knows? Just keep saying spicy sophomores, and I'll see you in the next episode. It was the year 1494 CE. The Aztec leader, Ahusot, was preparing for a battle against the people of Oaxaca. In the purple, you had the warrior fighting against the Oaxaqueño. It was then that warfare was often conducted for the sole purpose of capturing candidates for sacrifice. Though this was not the full case in this scene, they needed people to sacrifice and they took advantage of that. Though there were many other types of sacrifices all around the world, the Aztecs gained an infamous reputation for bloodthirsty human sacrifice with lurid tales of the beating heart being ripped from the still conscious victim, decapitation, skinning, and dismemberment. The sacrifices were usually performed on top of pyramids. Other types of sacrifices included the offering of other living creatures such as a deer, butterflies, and snakes, and sometimes little children. Rulers often use the spectacle of human sacrifice to terrify visiting rulers of newly conquered territories. 
Hundreds, perhaps even thousands of victims were sacrificed each year at the great Aztec religious sites. Human sacrifices were viewed as repayment for the sacrifices that God had made when creating the world and the sun. One of the most famous gods was the sun god, Huitzilipochtli. However, the leaders would sometimes take the sacrifices to a whole new level. They would cannibalize the sacrificial offerings. Thanks for watching. Hope you cringe as much as we did. The Aztecs are an example of an empire that used religion, art, and architecture to strengthen their rule. Religion was the most important way in which they consolidated the rule because of the fact that it tied art and architecture together. Art was used to make their rule more powerful. Through their art, they showed us their daily lives, sacrifices, and their conquests. The Aztecs traded their art, which then led it to spread. Since their art was about sacrifices and conquest, it showed other civilizations how ruthless the Aztecs were. Therefore, they made other civilizations fear and respect the Aztecs. Architecture contributed in strengthening the Aztec Empire's rule as well. They mostly built religious buildings, including temples and pyramids. Architecture helped them consolidate the Aztecs' power by the human sacrifices that were performed on the pyramids. These sacrifices were used to scare the citizens into obedience, therefore granting the Aztec priests and elites more power over their people. Greetings, I am your 55th president, Mr. Josh M. Razan, and recently I have been questioned about my qualifications of taking up a presidency. I would just like to answer to those questionings with my, by showing the people my vast knowledge of world history and leaders of the past. Throughout European history, People were given the right to rule by an idea called divine right, which is a, an idea in which one person was chosen by the hand of God himself to rule over a, a nation. This is similar to an idea called the mandate of heaven in ancient China where w one person was also selected to rule. It is very common in history for rulers to use art, architecture, and religion to consolidate their imperial power. Examples such as the Taj Mahal and the Great Wall of China are examples of rulers using their power and their money to build great monuments in order to show off their strength. Art was also a very common tool of propaganda. Notorious rulers like Napoleon and Augustus Caesar had artworks commissioned in their likeness to cre create an ethereal image of themselves. In the final analysis, Many imperial rulers of the past have used art, architecture, and religion to consolidate their imperial power. Can you explain how imperial rulers used architecture, art, and religion to consolidate their rule? For example, Taj Mahal, the most famous architectural achievement of Mughal India, displays political power of Shah Jahan. In addition, it symbolizes Indian civilization. Also, state power rulers continue to use religious ideas, art, and monumental architecture to legitimize and consolidate their power. The Aztecs were a powerful and dominant society that lived in central Mexico from the 12th to 14th century. They built, they built a civilized with a highly educated and skilled people. However, what most people today know, the Aztecs were known for their practice of human sacrifice.